see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Friday, September 13th, 2024, and this is the this is episode 773 of the Lots Project Podcast, and it's titled Friday the 13th. Yes, it's Friday, Friday the 13th, and I'll be chatting about what images come to mind with Friday the 13th, why we think it's such a, uh, a bad day. Uh, what you guys think, you can add that in the comments. Uh, are you afraid of Friday the 13th? Are you cautious? Is it a bunch of fooey? Whatever you think. Uh, definitely. Um... Oh, no, I didn't have the ads on. Oh, <laughs> I hate money. I hate money. All right, we're talking about Friday the 13th, riding out the storm uh, here. Francine, I believe it was called, rolled through yesterday. I think it's supposed to roll through today. I don't know, but we'll uh, we'll tell you about that. Uh, a vibe I've been picking up on Noster and um, things that I like a um, I've had some I, I have some theories of why the vibe is like it is over there. Better get these ads on before anybody else shows up and a little bit of uh, earthquake from Norman. Um so that's that's kind of what I got on the list. I got a few other things down here that I've been uh, thinking about and uh, we will hit on. But before that, let's head over into the live chat, see who's hanging out already and um, see what they have to say. First thing here on a Friday morning, if you're on that vertical feed, be sure you hit the like and subscribe and uh, consider checking out the main feed over uh, on the channel at the same time. Let me see, get all my shit back put together here. Got my ads turned on, guys. Thanks for letting me know. Um, good morning, Canadian Farmstead. Says, I didn't even realize today was Friday the 13th. Food Forest Farms, good morning. Thanks for stopping in. Awesome GSD in my cup right now. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, hmm. Rewilder Life in had no idea the date either. Jim, good morning on uh, on the, the YouTube and... The vertical feed with a with a hashtag grow noster uh good morning jamie off grid ping i will be out today to uh grab the pile of uh, stuff out there and another huge pile showing today so i appreciate you i appreciate you for sure it's been uh, interesting with the rain and things going on uh mike's homestead thanks for popping in hunter over on twitch Ah, Backwoods Butcher in for two days in a row. What's up, party people? Kyle booked his Airbnb and uh, and um, is all set to come down. <laughs> all set to come down to Tennessee to SRF, and I think you should too if you need tickets or you want to watch remotely. Scroll down into the video description, grab that uh, affiliate link. Uh, for your SR, all your SRF needs. Blakesley Acre is going to be rolling down too. Can't wait to see you uh, and meet you in person and and see. Yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you. Back with Butcher over on the vertical feed, getting shit started already. Communism is the only true government. Viva la Canada and Baby Castro. You got to thank Baby Castro and Baby Castro's dad for being a cuck. Pip in, Pip in the chat, Friday, Friday, Friday. Is it a good Friday, a Friday the 13th? Pip, is any Friday good in your world? Um, guys, throw it in the comments what you think of Friday the 13th, if it's a thing, if it's a uh, if it's a thing you worry about, if it's a thing you've ever thought about, or if it's just another day, or just another number. And uh, we'll talk about what's in the cup. In the cup today, we got... Uh, gsd blend working on the gsd blend this week and it, it's a good thing i've been having a, uh, some shoulder issues um corey has uh corey's been dealing with it for a long time with her office work um over the years it's uh it's a lot to do with um using the mouse being set up kind of awkwardly in this small space and just repetitive motion since my computer went out and i got a new computer i've been banging away on, on trying to get caught up 
um, long extended periods of using a mouse, things like that. And my shoulder is all fucked up. And so when I go to bed at night, um, it just starts aching. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rectify the problem. I'm stretching, I'm doing things like that. But at night, when I lay down is when the pain comes and it's, it's been a rough couple nights sleeping as I, as I rectify the issue. And, um, it's been nice to have that GSD in the morning, pour a cup of GSD and it's going to light you up for the day. It's higher, highly caffeinated, but no extra caffeine added. We were just smart enough to use highly caffeinated beans and light and roast them light to not burn out as much caffeine as roasting them a little bit darker it'll wake you up it won't give you the jitters and uh i think it's fantastic i am a little biased i uh i do represent it is uh it is a lots project blend from food forest farms the gsd blend you should go check it out today at foodforestfarms.com foodforestfarms.com <laughs> like you in the vertical feed like the thought gsd good sex daily i mean if you're having sex with your coffee, you're probably in the right place. The vertical feed is the literal dumpster of the world, of the internet. Um, come hang out. Come hang out. Good sex daily with your coffee. <laughs> Foodforestfarms.com is where you're going to find GSD blend and all sorts of other coffee blends. You can get 10% off your first order with LOTS10. Discount code, discount code LOTS10, L-O-T-S-1-0. Always free shipping from Food Forest Farms and fantastic customer service the coffee is fantastic you should check it out today and while you're there check out c4 club c4 club is uh is beyond anybody's expectations for what you get for the value and uh, we'll be talking about nostra a little later and value for value food forest farms c4 club all the coffee all the website all the stuff you can get when you interact with brian over at food forest farms the value for value is off the charts the man lives value for value. He's bought in whole wholeheartedly, and uh, he is he one hundred percent returns the value you give in the value he gives. So check it out today, foodforestfarms.com. All right, what do we got here? Uh, kin folk over in the vertical feed. Good morning to you. Thanks for stopping in. Hit that like, subscribe, and uh, and come back and see us again sometime. Um, choo, choo, choo. all right, Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, um, <laughs> uh, backwards says Joe was booking the, Joe was booking the, the Airbnb. Kyle isn't responsible enough to do that kind of stuff. Um, Canadian Farmstead says the reason Backwoods Butcher is so anti-Canadian is it's uh, it's got to be denial. And he's just struggling with the fact that he's a Southern Canadian up there in uh, in New Hampshire. And he's actually at the same parallel as Canadian Farmstead in Ontario. So I get that. I get that. You don't want to be associated with the with the the, the canoe heads, I think, is uh, one of the terms we came up with. Uh, Rewilder Life doesn't care about Friday the 13th. Off Grid Pink says superstition, luck, karma, all a bunch of lies, in my opinion. Uh, Jim says, Kyle, you should tell your webmaster to put a link to your Airbnb on your website. I don't think he has an Airbnb. I think he was booking one to stay in, Jim. <laughs> Canadian Farmstead said he's not superstitious. He's just a little stitious. Oh, canoe head. <laughs> Rewilder Life says, get yourself a good chiropractor. I'm off to mine. Um, I just need a, 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 a properly ergonomic uh, setup for, for working. Um, I've been through this. I've been through it. And uh, it's, it's relatively early in the process. And I'm a, I'm a bitch when it comes to pain in my shoulder and not being able to sleep. So I'll, I'll rectify this pretty quick. Um, I don't think it's going to be a chiropractor issue. Um, Backwoods Butcher says there's going to be a party in the tiny house up there in, in Camden when, uh, when they roll into town, that Airbnb will not get the security or cleaning deposit back for sure. Good thing it's on Joe's credit card. 
Uh, Food Forest Farm says plain cream to the rescue. I think there's a C4 shipment coming soon. Uh, Pip says, I only worry on the days that end in the letter Y. I never took you for a worry wart. <laughs> Kinfolk says, Canadians are the friendliest people ever. I'm in Alberta, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I tend to agree with you about the Canadians. Uh, I'm not sure if it's they're the friendliest or just the simplest people I've ever met. And my audience is full of them. Uh, when I look at my stats, um, the the downloads from up north are are definitely a, a strong a strong representation. Uh, Canadian Farm says, says find a chiropractor. Um, Backwoods Butcher says we had a fun troll in the Misfit Farmers Live last night. Booted him real quick. <sighs> chiropractor. <sighs> The old, the old, um, Jim says, uh, his old boss used to say, I only drink on days that end in Y. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, that's because they all, they all end in Y. <laughs> Back with Butcher with a, with a, a new Canadian slur for the show. Canadians, uh, can affectionately be referred to as moose jockeys. Um, Canadian Farm says that if only I had a source of comfrey for my shoulder. If I wanted comfrey, I know I would go to comfreyroots.com and order some up today because it takes a while for it to get established to be able to use the use the leaf. Comfrey, comfreyroots.com for all your comfrey needs. <laughs> Jim says he needs some more food forest farms GSD in his cup. Are you drinking GSD today too, Jim? Oh, all right, guys. Uh, kinfolk over there in Alabama. Um, you got any? You got any uh, sister wives or anything in your in your clan there, kinfolk? Cousin uncles? Um, <laughs> If we want to, if we want to talk about stereotypes, <laughs> well, their life says apparently I have a Canadian accent, eh? <laughs> Canadian Farmstead understands. <laughs> he says jokes are always funnier after they've been explained. <laughs> Pips, Pips, uh, Pip's amazed that you have the interwebs down there in Alabama, kinfolk. <laughs> Seven crows rolling in over on the vertical feed. Thanks for stopping in. Hit that like and subscribe, would you? I appreciate it. You say Arizona, and yes, I have guns. <laughs> well, at least you didn't say Alberta, and yes, I have guns, or the government would be knocking on your door. Um why what kind of guns do you have seven crows thanks for thanks for letting us know john palmer good morning good day and good weekend to you oh gotcha um just just fulfilling the stereotype of arizona is arizona high on the on the stereotype for um for owning guns, I, I would have gone if I if you told me what or you asked me what state in the in the union in the in the in the union would you consider the most gun crazy? I don't want to say crazy. The most gun ownership, I would have said Texas. I, I think Arizona would never even have crossed my mind. But all right, wasn't it down in Arizona where that? Um, that senator, the anti-gun senator, got shot, got plugged in the head, um, and then a guy with a permit to carry, permit to carry shot the guy that shot her. Wasn't that Arizona? Um, kin folks says down in Alabama they got running water and electricity now. <laughs> Thanks for playing along, kin folk. I appreciate you. I we like people around here that can take a take a little ball busting. Um, and you survived an incest and a, and a, a lack of technology joke. 
Uh, you're welcome here anytime. Appreciate you. Um, Mr. UFO 777, Galaris in Annapolis Valley in Nova Scotia, Canada, are famous for inbreeding sisters, marrying brothers, and having children. I'll have to ask my buddy about that. He's from Nova Scotia. Um, <laughs> Back with Butcher says Arizona's armed to the teeth. Uh, Food Forest Farm agrees Arizona equals guns and grannies. Um, Pip says they need to own guns in Arizona. They're close to Mexico and drug lords. Thanks, Kamala. Oh, God. Backwoods Butcher says there's lots of unregulated gun shows. Uh, Mr. UFO 777 says, as a kid, we collected water off the roof. That's, that's exactly what we're doing. And, and rewilder life over here in the main feed says, uh, says that uh, the, the, it was letting kinfolk know that that's more than she has up in Michigan right now. Uh, the running water and electricity, but she's building a new house. So, um, all right. All right. Jim comes over with a warning in the vertical feed. Whatever you do, don't tell him how old you are. He's ruthless with the depends jokes. <laughs> You're just mad because your diaper's wet, old man. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, it's Friday the 13th. Uh, seems like nobody really fucking gives a shit. Um, anybody over the age of like 12, I guess. So there are some there are some mental uh, mental midgets in the in the crowd. I'm guessing Backwoods Butcher is is shivering in his closet right now, scared that uh, that the boogeyman's going to get him here on Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> Backwoods says Arizona, lots of leather skin and fake Indian jewelry. <laughs> Uh, Seven Crow says Gabby Gifford was that senator's name. Uh, Kelly's her husband. Mm. Did it in front of a Safeway with a full metal jacket. Great. Great. Seven Crow's lost all his uh, guns in a boating accident, just like my, my Bitcoin. <laughs> Canadian Farmstead says Kyle's just getting ready to strip down and make more TikToks with his pigs. That was that was fantastic yesterday, man. I appreciate that, guys. If you uh, if you're on TikTok and you're not following Backwoods Butcher, um, hey Seven Crows, have a great day. Check you later. It'll uh, uh, Monday through Friday, six a.m. Central. Just pop in, say hi. Uh, I'll remember that name for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should follow the backwoods butcher backwoods butcher 603 on tiktok um the dude has a, a sense of humor i gotta give him that i gotta give him that it's not for everybody but it, it's pretty fucking hilarious so check it out if you're on tiktok if you're on youtube all of that <coughs> so anyway anyway because you guys aren't interested in Fire the 13th, I'm still going to tell you um, why, why throughout history it's been come to know as um, ooh, Friday the 13th, unlucky day, whatnot. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. Kyle sending me TikToks directly in, in uh, Telegram. That's not good. Um, so... Friday the 13th. I'm not a big proponent of it. When I was uh, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, 13 was actually my lucky number. Um, I was a big fan of 13. I was always kind of the 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 counter counter norm, uh, the weirdo kid, you know, the the one that was like, oh, if you guys all think it's scary, I think it's cool. Uh, so 13 was always a good thing. Friday the 13th never really bothered me. Uh, I had bigger issues with leap day, uh, leap year day. I've had some really bad luck and shitty stuff happen on leap year days, uh, which I would prefer to uh, have not happened. So there's that. 
But Friday the 13th has uh, a long, long history of um, Canadian Barb says, you weird, can't picture it. <laughs> uh, has a long, long, steep, seeped history in uh, being unlucky and why it, why it's, ooh, Friday the 13th. Um, looks like I got uh, four things on the list here that I came up with of, of potential reasons that have added to the, the belief of Friday the 13th. Uh, first one comes from Christianity. Um, in Christianity, if you follow, if you're a, if you're a believer um, and, you, and you read the good book, uh, 13 is considered an unlucky number because there were 13 people at the Last Supper. Uh, including Judas, who betrayed Jesus, uh, and that also Jesus's crucifixion is believed to have taken a place on a Friday, uh, adding to the fear of Fridays. So add the add the um, add the Last Supper attendee, attendees and the crucifixion of Jesus, and the Christians think Friday the Thirteenth is a spooky day. Um, moving on to North Myth Norse mythology. And uh, I didn't have any timelines here, but I have a, a sneaking suspicion that Norse mythology should have probably been uh, prior to Christian tradition. I think that might have happened first. Mm, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm not real good with those dates back in the in the BCE, BEC, AD, BC um, time period. Uh, but in North, Norse mythology... Uh, there was a trickster named Loki, if you guys know of Loki. Uh, I, our neighbor had a dog named Loki. Uh, but it was the 13th guest at the banquet of Valhalla. If you don't know what Valhalla is, you're going to want to look into that. Where he caused the death of a beloved god, Blotter, uh, Balder. Excuse me. This tale associates the number 13 with misfortune, misfortune and chaos. Um. So there we got uh, we got a couple of uh, 13s. Um, another reference to the thir Friday the 13th would be from the Knights Templar. Uh, a more historic connection to the mass arrest of Knights Templar on Friday, October 13th, 1307, by Philip King Philip IV of France. Many were tortured and executed, fueling the belief that Friday the 13th was cursed. Whew! So there we got three biggies. And then the fourth one that uh, that popped up in my search was uh, the modern media. Uh, over time, these beliefs have been mixed with modern superstitions perpetuated by the media, literature, and films like Friday the 13th, turning it into a widely recognized day of bad luck. Yeah, bad luck. You make your own fucking luck, guys, just so you know. Um, vertical feed over here, uh, Mr. UFO 777. We once lived in a ghetto, according to our landlord's secretary, in a notice sent out people throwing diapers in the trees. I never saw a fresh crop of tree drivers. <laughs> uh, Kinfolk says 13 is the number of freedoms Canadians have left. <laughs> I think you're a little high on that, Ken folk, and I appreciate you being here. Anybody that rubs on the Canadians is good with me. <laughs> Food Forest Farms hoping to get lucky here in a few. Um, stop poking Chicken Joe in the back with that thing. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, sorry guys, we're getting catched up. Um, <laughs> Valhalla. <laughs> Backwoods Butcher says 13. Fun fact, it's also a baker's dozen. Not all bad. <laughs> way to look on the bright side. <laughs> way to look. On the bright side. Um, Backwards Butcher says kinfolk is now his kinfolk. <laughs> Anti-Canadian. We will we will not put up with any anti-Canadianism. <laughs> no, we support and encourage it. Uh, for Food Forest Farm says Chicken Joe's fighting back. It's going to be a cuddle with a struggle, I think. 
Canadian farms that just sitting up here waiting for America to bring us democracy. We have lots of oil. We have to wait till the brown people fucking run out first, Canadian. <laughs> You're going to be safe for a while. <laughs> Michael Williams, there's 13 reasons I don't want to work at Blakesley Farms. <laughs> Wow. Is Joe Blakesley a bad boss? <laughs> did we did we just uh did we just expose a a, um, a horrible boss? Whew. Uh-oh. Um so that's Friday the 13th. I, I think uh, we're all in agreement here. <laughs> Kin folks on team backwoods. Backwoods Butcher says Joe Blakesley's heights 12 of the 13 reasons. <laughs> Is he a midget? Uh, oh, man. Is it going to be fun getting pictures with Backwoods, me, and Joe Blakesley? Kyle and I are both pushing 6'5". Um, Is Joe like 5'6"? So Friday the 13th looks like a uh, looks like a non-starter in this group. Uh, we kind of all believe in uh, making our own luck, I, I guess. Blakesley Aixers, uh, with the with the rebuttal, says, yes, I'm a slave driver and I'm almost a midget. <coughs> Canadian Farms says, says uh, Blakesley's average height, but we're both freaks. Corey tries to tell me that uh, she's the average one and I'm 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 the abnormal one. I'm abnormal in several ways and she's she's pretty much got me convinced that I'm I'm taller than the average Joe, especially Blakesley. Uh, John Palmer says we just need to hold him up between us. Blackwoods Butcher says Zach from Mississippi is coming up too. Gonna look like two giants with two internet husbands. <laughs> That's right. That dude's a little tiny fucker too, isn't he? <laughs> um, next thing I had on the list was yesterday you guys knew we were getting ready to get bombarded by the remnants of Hurricane Francine. Um, Francine must have not been too much of a bitch because it didn't seem too bad to me. We got a little bit of wind gusts uh, here and there throughout the day. Um, a few pockets of, of, uh, downpours and pretty consistently just shitty, gloomy, um, shitty, gloomy, misty crap. Uh, and then as I went to bed, I thought it was picking up. I thought the wind was picking up and, uh, it was, it was what it was. I did see that they update the, updated the, um, the forecast to include another like two plus inches of rain today. So maybe Francine got delayed. Maybe she's running late. I don't know. Uh, uh, most likely case is that it went a little farther west than it was supposed to. Um, and we're just getting the edge of it. Kinfolk says, I thought you were Canadian. No, I'm uh, I'm actually so so a long, long kind of journey. I'm I, I'm from Western New York. I'm actually a, a quarter Canadian because my dad, my dad has dual citizenship, uh, Canadian and U.S. I lived in New York growing up. I moved to Minnesota for 20 years. I met my be current, current beautiful wife um, and we had a, a farm up in Minnesota. We decided to sell that and move into an RV and travel around. Uh, and now right now we're set down in um, in, I guess. It's technically West Tennessee because uh, the, the definition of West Tennessee is west of the Tennessee River. We literally are a mile and a half west of the river. So technically, we're in West Tennessee uh, working on a project for a friend that is a Canadian by, uh, by coincidence. Uh, he's got a piece of property down here that he can only use half the year. So uh, we're, we're developing it out for him to make it productive all year round. So that's a little bit of my story. Um, John Palmer says women are usually late. <laughs> Sometimes that's a good thing. Most times that's a bad thing. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Backwards Butcher says, I've got one chicken that constantly escapes the coop and shits on my steps. You're a fucking butcher, dude. Do you know how you handle problems like that? You literally kill them. <laughs> um, Kinfolk says, I'm not far away. I'm 50 miles north of Birmingham, uh, Alabama. Let me see. Toot, 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 toot. Uh, we're right north of Mississippi, like north of Corinth, Mississippi, uh, by a ways. I think you're, um, I went through Muscle Shoals. Uh, I was excited to go. So I've been to Alabama. I've never stayed in Alabama. I, I heard, I heard, um, I heard some banjos twing and twang and, and, um, and we moved on, but we did two or three Muscle Shoals on our way down, uh, out of Tennessee last time we, we took a ven adventure. So yeah, I, I, we're not far. We're not far. I, I love the music culture over there in uh, in in Alabama and the football roll tide. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Jesus. Um, so the storm was over underwhelming so far. Uh, it's a good thing. It, we got rain. We got long, uh, soaking rains. I don't think it was um, the things that, that nightmare flooding was made of that uh, I think it, it, it soaked in. I don't know. The ground is probably pretty hydrophobic. It, it basically didn't rain for a month. So I was looking at it as I would have liked a long, sustained rain uh, to give it a chance to soak into the soil, uh, especially out at, at Delinquent Scully. But uh, a heavy, a heavy downpour that that it looked like it was going to be probably would have washed the road out quite a bit. And we got an event coming up here within a few weeks. I don't know how much um, we're going to be able to get equipment back there to um, to groom the road. So I was hoping for not a, a huge downpour and not a whole lot of washout. So we'll see. We'll see how it ends up. Um, it is what it is and we'll figure it out. Kinfolk says, my cousin, I mean, my wife is from Michigan. <laughs> uh, Canadian Farm said. <laughs> Canadian Farm says, says, I wasn't sure if it was a pig or someone squealing like a pig, so he kept on driving. <laughs> Mike's home says so they got almost no rain there. So so you're east of me. So I think I think the the center of this thing, uh, it had broken down. It's not a hurricane by the time we get up here. But I think it went further west and also the the um the east to west diameter of the the, the heavy rain was smaller than they expected. So I think that's what happened. I think that's what happened. Um, you guys want to talk about Noster? You want to talk about stupid? Um, nah, I shouldn't say stupid. Um, irritating companies that I've been working with. Um New new companies I found to work with. I got I got all of that here ready rolled up. Packwood's Butcher says no. <laughs> Jim says, I actually know a married people that met at a family reunion and now they're and now their family tree is more like a bush. Do you know why the most popular uh, you know why the po most popular sexual position in Alabama is reverse cowgirl, right? <laughs> Fuck. Fucked it up. GSD didn't kick in yet. Do you know why they don't they don't do reverse cowgirl in Alabama, right? <laughs> live, live on the internet. Um Backwoods says there's a new Tiger King called Chimp Crazy. I really am guessing your dad is a big fan. 
is he going to try to go work at the chimp, the chimp rescue or whatever they're going to be talking about? All right, we're talking Noster. Canadian Farm said said Noster and um, and why Kyle hates money. <laughs> so I've been spending more time on Noster. I've been I've been um, brainstorming ways to promote it to onboard people. Um, kind of um, coming up with uh, easy how tos. Uh, taking notes. I haven't produced them yet. Uh, taking notes, learning about new wallets, the easy ways to do things. Uh, I have a few ideas that I want to possibly roll out there as Noster uh, exclusive content. And um, more than likely, I'm going to need participants in these ideas that aren't currently on Noster. So to convince them to participate, I'll probably have to have an easy onboarding, um, walk them through it, hold their hand, because they're all going to be about the fucking mentality of Kyle um, and the and the IQ. So, you know, make it stupid simple. Um, but I'm really enjoying it there. Kyle says, uh, third time's the charm and he'll help. He says, hey, Brian, why don't people in Alabama hate reverse cowgirl? That's wrong, Kyle. I said that the first time. It's why don't people in Alabama like reverse cowgirl? Because they don't turn their back on family. Um, coming from the guy with a missing tooth. <laughs> Good morning, KJ. How are we doing? Um, so I've been digging into Noster a lot. I've been looking back at old notes. Um, if you don't know, Noster stands for notes and other stuff through relays. Notes being similar to posts, tweets, um, anything like you would do on social media. The method at which you convey your idea, message, or sentiment to the others is through notes. Um, Canadian Farmstead says, I think you still told it wrong. <laughs> Jim, the ever-present professor, says, didn't we have this English lesson yesterday? <laughs> you are your... So I've been spending a lot of time digging through old notes, um, looking through my feed, looking through my bookmarks, um, evaluating some different clients, uh, looking at new wallets. And I just stepped back for a second and realized, I've been, I, I've realized a long time ago, and as I've used Noster, um, I've enjoyed it more than any other social media I've used, really. Um, and I've kind of just rolled with it. I've kind of just rolled with it. And, and you know, they say do more of what you like, do more of what you're enjoying, uh, unless it's crack or math or something like that. Uh, Noster doesn't seem to be either of those. So I was contemplating while I was weed eating out at Delinquent's Gully the other day about why I like Noster. You know, there's the uncensorable, there's the, you can say whatever the fuck you want and not worry about getting a strike or getting your stuff taken down or getting a pee pee slap or getting your group shut down, getting your account removed. It's, it's whatever you want. Backwoods Butcher says he's currently getting back into MySpace. Perfect. That's the perfect place for you. Uh, you can put music on your profile. <laughs> um, so that's a great that's a that's a great thing. The uncensored. 
the they're not going to take you down for taking for speaking your mind for saying what you want for having a bad day for having a hot button issue like whatever whatever you want you want to put fucked up memes about kamala harris eating cats and donald trump getting his head blown off go ahead no one no no one cares um and the people that care will follow you and they'll probably give you bitcoin they'll probably uh they'll probably give you bitcoin uh, there is a lot of Bitcoin centered stuff on Noster, but it's not the only thing that's there. Um, and as I was contemplating why I think I enjoy it so much, it came down to two things. One was the value for value culture. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like... Um, you know, there's there's functionality on Noster, and it's called zapping. Uh, I appreciate Jim every day stops by the Noster feed and zaps me a big old zap to pay for my stream over there. I uh, I always appreciate that. Jim's uh, Jim's a big proponent of Noster, um, but the value for value kind of works like uh, it works like a like, but you're sending fractions of money to them, hard money real money bitcoin to be precise uh satoshis through the lightning network uh that's an instant return of value we've been messing around with value for value for a while with like podcast 2 2.0 network uh with fountain uh, podverse things like that nostr is a great way to earn a little bitcoin um just for just for posting on social media uh, but the value for value culture is more than just getting paid for your content, I think. I think the people that grasp it understand that Noster isn't just a clearinghouse for your bitching. Um, I think the people that have built the culture there and it's still growing. I, 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 uh, I, I failed to find a, a hard number on how many people are currently using it. Um, but the people that have really built the culture there and thrive in a value for value environment, bring positive, bring, um, thought provoking, bring, um, content worth reading funny entertaining fucked up twisted whatever you can find it all there but it's all value when i go to twitter when i go to facebook when i go anywhere else it's just like fucking garbage it's people bitching it's people um, complaining about Trump or Kamala or um, their neighbor or whatever. When I'm on Noster, it feels like it's a it, it's a net positive. It feels like um, it feels like a way net positive. But the other nice part about it is that I realize, and I think it's a combination of both that um, that make me like it so much more, is the value for value proposition mixed with the fact that I choose who I see. Um, the beauty of Noster is there's no logarithm. There's no magic computer somewhere feeding you what it thinks you should see. And I didn't say what you want to see because we know on Facebook and we know on Twitter and we know on all these other social media platforms that they don't show you what you want to see. Because if they showed you what you wanted to see, you'd see all the posts from the things you follow, from the things you like, from the people you're friends with. But my Facebook feed is full of advertisements, suggested posts, things that they know irritate me, um, agitate me, uh, make me interact and, and, um, and lose my fucking mind. 
my interactions on Nostra are very positive because I'm not being fed a bunch of agitation. I curate my feed. I find the people I want to see. I follow them and their shit shows up. All of their shit shows up in my feed. And if I don't like them, if I don't like what they're saying, if I disagree with them, I can talk to them. I can com- converse with them. And it's, it feels like most people on there that I'm interacting with, at least, are open to a, a, a decent conversation and a, agree to disagree or uh, or hash things out and, and possibly try to sway the opinion of another. Awesome. I don't have to agree with you. I just have to to understand why you think the way you do. Um, but you curate your own feed. You don't want to see the pedo that's there. Oh my God, there's pedos there. There's pedos there. There's racists there. There's there's um, there's there's all 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 sorts of people there. But you know what? As an anarchist, I mean the pedos could probably run through a wood chipper. I don't know. I haven't seen any pedos there. I've seen racists. I've seen anti-Semites. I've seen all sorts of shit. But you know what the beauty of Nostra is? And you know what the beauty of uh, uncensored social media is? You hit unfollow. <clears throat> you hit block. You don't have to see it. But if I want a space to express anything that I want, they get a space to express anything that they want. Food Forest Farm said, are there titties there? Yes, there are a lot of titties on Noster. Um, be prepared if you dive in and use it and you you really explore the, the environment. Um, you will probably see some breasts. You might see penises. You might see weird photos of things that you never thought possible. Um, Hunter says, I've only seen AI boobies. <laughs> do you do you want to know where to find the boobies on Noster? <laughs> Make a new end pub before you do. <laughs> Tip one, find... Make yourself a nice secured end pub when use Tor through the whole thing and don't connect it to anything that um... <laughs> Food Forest Farm says he can't get enough of the weenus. <laughs> oh, guys, don't forget about super chats. They're always available. Uh, ten, a $20 super chat and I will pull out my weenus and put it on the screen right here on YouTube. I will risk, I will risk the, the ban the short ban on YouTube to show my weenus for 20 bucks. Cause 20 bucks is 20 bucks. I mean, legit 20 bucks is 20 bucks. So here on Friday the 13th in the morning, um, you got payday today. You got an extra 20 bones, throw it, throw it at a super chat and I, I will whip out my weenus. Jim says, I think if you search hashtag titties, you will see plenty boobster, um, if you're into feet, you got foot stir, you got all sorts of, um, all sorts of rabbit holes to go down over there. Um, but I think the combination of people that really grasp a value for value proposition, where they grasp a value for value environment, where you don't necessarily get paid until you, you show people that you're bringing value. And it, it might not necessarily be monetary. Um, I think people that understand the value for value concept look beyond just monetary value. Uh, I think they understand that um, that sharing thoughts, sharing ideas, sharing information um, is also value. That being a community, <coughs> being a community... Uh, and growing connections brings value. I just think that people want to put their, I don't want to say put their best foot forward, but they try a little harder. I feel like the quality of 
posts there, the quality of my feed is way better than any social media I've, I've interacted in. I think you should consider joining. I think you should consider shine, signing up. Um, there's a video in uh, in my long playlist of, uh, of videos of how to sign up for Noster. I believe it might be in the video description. I think I left it in there. It's uh, it's under five minutes. Granted, it's not the most. There's a big faction on Noster that's all about privacy and security. Of course, there is. It's it's a um, it's a kind of a, a haven for the people that have been booted from other places. It's a ha a haven for people that didn't like the fact that Facebook was collecting all your information. It's a haven for people that didn't like getting banned on Twitter or getting their shit exposed on Twitter. Um, so there is a big emphasis on privacy, security, um, being your own custodian of your, of your, uh, of your Bitcoin, things like that. The, the way that I found that stupid, simple, fast, and easy, the down and dirty way to sign up is not all of that. It uses a custodial wallet. It uses, um, it uses email. It, it, it loosely ties you to your account. If you're not doing clandestine things, you're not worried about it, you're trying to expose yourself to a new technology, to a new platform, Get familiar with it. There's pl there's plenty of points where you can say, all right, I'm going to pump the brakes. I'm going to dive in. I'm going to learn about this. I liked it. I took the five minutes. I've explored it. I got to use it. I'm, I'm kind of digging this. Now let's do it right. You can ask folks there how to make your account more secure, how to make your NPUB more secure, your NSEC. Um, how to keep your identity secure uh, and go through the motions after the fact. Backwoods Butcher says, I'm not trying to see you expose yourself. You can pay me to keep my weenus covered too, you know. <laughs> uh, check it out. Give it a try. Uh, there is a there is a big 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 community growing there. Um, I think as I think as the major platforms, the legacy platforms, ratchet down uh, censorship, as nations ratchet down censorship, as they collect more data, as they feed people the the insanity of the election season uh, here in the U.S. I think it just is a catalyst for people moving to a uh, a place where they they get to choose again. You get you used to get to choose what what Facebook showed you. Um, Twitter used to not necessarily be a dumpster fire. Noster's growing. The ability for you to take one profile, one login, one one uh, one identity. And take it across the internet from your from your podcast player to your um, streaming service to your um, your social media type platforms to um, using it for work related purposes and communications with friends and entertainment. Um, it's growing, and the developers are there asking for input. They're interacting with you. They're they're improving things for the people that are using them. And with that comes the fact that you're basically in beta. Um, there are going to be hiccups. There are going to be glitches. And it doesn't work like a smooth, polished, multi-trillion dollar fucking app. These guys are coding this. A lot of them in, in, their, uh, in their spare time after their real job. Um, spinning up these clients, spinning up these services for people to use that all interact with the Noster protocol that all that you've created there. The concept is phenomenal. And 
when people realize that, I think it's 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 a home run. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think it's fantastic. Oh, Francine's coming in the back door over there. I see the flag waving. She's blowing in the door. Whew, uh-oh. Jim says it's not perfect, but I think it's the best thing we have. Best for communication. Best for commerce with anyone anywhere. Oh, yeah. They're setting up on like marketplaces, groups, chat rooms, all sorts of fun stuff. There's a list. Um, Nosterapps.com. Com, I'd have to look it up. I've been I've been dabbling on there, looking at all the different clients and apps that uh, interact with the Nostr protocol, and it's it's ever expanding and mind blowing. Uh, and the access to the people that are developing them, basically, basically, um, when if you watch the Social Network, and when when Mark Zuckerberg moved to California and he's there with uh, he's there with um, Justin Timberlake, <laughs> who was uh, the um, uh, the Napster dude, whatever the fuck his name was. I can't think of it at the moment uh, when they were out there together and it starts to take off. If you were in if you were in Zuckerberg's DMs going Hey, dude, I really don't think that the the visual aspect of the of the layout is is quite what you want. It's not really working on the Android phone. Um, you might want to adjust it. And he wrote back, and he goes, "Yeah, I'll do that after work tonight." <coughs> Hang and Laundry says, "Which app, client app, whatever? That's right. Um, for Noster, do you use on your phone?" Uh, I use Amethyst is my main go-to. Uh, Victor, the developer of Amethyst, is fucking phenomenal. Um, understands both the dev side and the user side very well. Uh, open to uh, suggestions, criticism, and anything. I, I think he's going to be the winner um, when it comes to, to apps. Winner as in one of many and probably end up be the most popular. Uh, primal for Android or um, iPhone. Primal is the easy button. Primal provides you with a wallet through Strike. It provides you with the onboarding. It provides you with the profile setup. It's a smooth, easy, beginner way to dive in all in once. And that's what I was kind of saying with... Um, with the, the 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 security folks primal is a it's through strike you got a kyc you you kind of everything is linked together once you link your your kyc account to your npub it's forever linked um but there's ways to rectify that later you're not going to jump over there and 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 grow your grow your following a million followers uh, overnight. Well, there's not I don't there's not a million users anyway. I don't think yet. Um, there's plenty of time to set up an account to explore it to be not super security conscious and figure it out later. Primal's the easy button. Primal is what I used in my video. Um, it's nice because it's uh, it, it can be used on Apple or Android. Um, and then Domus is the, the iPhone uh, go-to from what I understand. So if you're an Android person, uh, Amethyst, if you're uh, an iPhone person, Domus, and if you're a very noob and you just want to sign up and, and get a feel for it, I would say Primal is the easy button. And uh, I have instructions on the, on the website or on uh, my YouTube. Uh, just go to Go to my channel and search Noster, and you'll see five minute easy sign up for Noster. Uh, Jim says Jack Spierko was talking about Ox Chat to replace Telegram when it gets completely co opted. I signed up. It's fucking glitchy as all hell. Um, I'm not. For people that are using Noster, I think, and understand the concept of development. Uh, and that things need to get developed and updated and the, the glitches need to be worked out as people use it. You can't just like sit in a vacuum and develop something and say, it's perfect. 
um, once it goes out into the wild, uh, there's a process. There's a feedback process, a fixing process. Sometimes it takes longer than others. Um, Ox Chat is super fucking glitchy right now. I wouldn't want someone's first experience with Noster to be Ox Chat. Will it be probably the replacement for Telegram? Absolutely. Um, I can see that. Or another client will get spun up. Uh, another chat-based system will get spun up by another de developer that says Ox Chat isn't for me. And that's the best part. You know how to code. You want to learn how to code. You want to learn um, the Noster protocol. And you want to make your own client. You want to make your own uh, service or app there? Go ahead. There's no CEO to ask. There's no board of directors. There's no application um, process. Spin it up and launch it. There'll be people there that are more than willing to help you. You want to get into coding? You want to mess around? You want to learn about it? You want to help develop Noster? and you get a basic understanding of coding, and you reach out to a team and say, hey, are you looking for some volunteer help? Why not? So yeah, OxChat will probably be um, used in the future. I just couldn't, I couldn't put, I couldn't expose new people to the, that much glitchiness yet. Telegram still functioning. That guy got honey potted, by the way. If you if you haven't if you haven't kind of uh, it, it really faded out of the news really quick, but um, there was a lot of stories right after the fact about his Russian girlfriend. Sometimes the honey is just too sweet to resist. If you saw a picture of her. I have a feeling that she was a Russian, um, a Russian agent or working for some government for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> um, all right. A couple more things. A couple more things. Um, Yesterday, I got a couple messages, or I got a message um, about Shopify. Uh, uh, so if you, you all know that I do uh, Amazon influencer videos, I put them on YouTube, blah, 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 and all that. I was working on my Amazon shit yesterday and uh, kind of bemoaning the fact that um, just the general commissions are so low. It makes up for it in the fact of the they they have the the customer base. Um, I do the video and it's there. It's easy button. It's uh it's it is what it is. They bring the audience to the table, which makes up slightly for the lower commissions. There's other programs through Amazon that can get some higher commissions. Blah 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 and all that. Whatever. That's that's ir ir irrelevant. I'm I'm continuing with the Amazon stuff, but. I am, I am a, I, I do have an account with what's called Shopify Collabs. And what Shopify Collabs is, is um, people that have Shopify stores can, can um, offer affiliate accounts. They can, they can put uh, discount codes out there for, for creators. They can, um, they give uh, very, very nice commissions. Um, you can sort by commission percentage, but these are more, so Amazon is in that uh, three to 5%. Um, some of the creator connections companies that are doing shorter campaigns will for a short time pay you 10, 20, 30 percent, but um, it's for a limited time. Shopify seems to be more in the 20 percent for the products that I'm looking at. I mean, there's um, there's plenty of the oh, we'll give you one percent, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I, I pulled up I got a message from somebody through Shopify. And I pulled it up and I started, I was like, why am I not putting more time into this? And I started kind of scrolling through the stuff and um, up pops Butcher Box for pets. And I'm like, wow, they stole Butcher Box's name. Interesting. 
Uh, I dug in a little bit. Now, I have a 140-pound and 180-pound dog. I'm guessing when the numbers play out, unless I get a bunch of people to sign up and uh, I'm earning commission, I'm guessing it's going to be out of my price range to feed my enormous dogs um, the amount of food they'd need. But if you got a small dog, if you got um, if you got a busy life and a small dog, um, I I really think that the butcher box for pets isn't a horrible idea. Now I got uh, I got a little chastised because um, it sounds like butcher box shit on Jack Spirico. Um, we have a lot of open overlapping audience, and uh, I said butcher box and instantly got a couple of uh, nasty grams about how horrible the company is and they they hurt jack's feelings uh i have no idea what happened so that's between jack and butcher box um i looked at the food it looked decent i haven't tried it uh but anybody that wants to look into it i did get uh 20 off with my discount code uh so i'll throw the link there in the in the in the comments if you're if you're looking to check it out if it's something you're interested in definitely check it out take the 20 percent off try it out uh, i'll get a little credit you get uh you get some uh you get to try out at 20 percent off I, I think that's a win-win food forest farm says if you don't have chicken joe yeah she she cooks for them every day yeah so so that was cool. I, I came across Butcher Box. I looked in, and it is actually the same Butcher Box that does the meat, um, the meat subscription too. Um, so that was interesting. I found that. I, I instantly, um, instantly got the twenty percent. So I don't know uh, if that's just their standard commission and uh, and discount rate. Whatever. Uh, I'll see. I'll dive in more. But I always like to throw that out there. If if you, I'm not saying that it's the best. But if you are going to try it anyway, you might as well get 20% off and you might as well let them send me money is my philosophy at this moment. Because I will tell you, I haven't tried it. I will tell, I mean, straight up. So I can't, I can't vouch for the quality of the food. Um, but if you are trying it anyway, take 20% off and send 20% to me. I mean, how, how great is that if you're going to try it anyway? So not a recommendation, more of a, here you go. Uh, another one that that uh, kind of tripped me up was this thing called Ticker Meter. <coughs> and I just kind of looked at it. It was, um, it was, um, I was scrolling through and there was, uh, it was like this block. It was like the block clock. If you're into Bitcoin and you know what block clock is, uh, basically, I saw it caught my eye because it says BTC and it had the price there and it was sitting on the guy's desk. And I was like, oh, this is similar to Block Clock. I got to check this thing out. It's called Ticker Meter. It's out of Denmark. Um, and so I was reading about it, blah, blah, blah. Um, the, the terms weren't that great. I mean, it was 10% off. They were kind of spendy uh, for what I thought they were, what I think they are. Uh, they were like, I think it was like 90 bucks or two for 150 or something like that. But basically it's a Wi-Fi connected ticker symbol um, that you can put on your desk. You run it through an app and it displays uh, on your desk. So you're not having to go to your phone to check Bitcoin price or so, whatever. Uh, I'll probably, uh, spoiler alert, I'm getting one in the mail. Actually two. So I just requested... Um, a conversation with them. Basically, you you request uh, for a discount code and affiliate link, and then it opens up a chat conversation with the company. And I was just like, "Why not? I'll check them out." I wasn't looking for a sample. I was I was just gonna look into them more um, before I did it, and he moved on it. And I wake up this morning to a message on Instagram from Ticket Meter, and it was like. Hey, I saw you requested a collab over on Shopify. Would you like me to send you out some samples? I was like, wow, that's pretty proactive. Um, sure. <laughs> sure. I said, yeah, I'll, uh, I'd take a look. Why not? Instantly writes back. And yeah, they're in Denmark. So it was in the middle of the day there at five in the morning here. 
but he sends me a link and says, Hey, here you go. Um, here's for free. Here's uh, for a free order. Here you go. Uh, ship away. It'll be there next week. Sending me a two pack of these things to check out. Um, I was like, nice, nice. They're like, yeah, whenever you get them, uh, do a review, whatever. And it made me, re it made me realize it made me realize Food Force Farms had just got a new C4 through the Lots Project community. <laughs> um, it made me it made me realize, and I've been I've been thinking about this for quite a while since I've been doing a lot of um, product videos. Uh, some I get paid for, some are in exchange for products, some are for expensive products, some are for very inexpensive products. And a, a overwhelming theme that I've kind of come to realize is the cheaper the product, the more insistent the fucking vendor. The more expensive the product, the vendors that are paying for videos. Um, Julie O from Indiana uh, Julie O from Indiana is a, uh, is a longtime listener of the show. I believe head on into the telegram chat and, uh, tag, start typing Julie O and see if, uh, if it's the same Julie O I'm thinking of, um, it, it, it's, it's been an overwhelming consistent pattern that the cheaper the product, the more the company wants from you for free. The shorter timelines, the, um, the, 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 the more, um, the more demands, the more incessant messages for updates. I have companies that have sent me products that are over $1,500 that I never hear from again. We had a conversation. I said, I'd love to try your product. Um, they paid me on top of that. They send out the product and I never hear from them. They're like, yeah, just upload the video when you get a chance. Make sure you, you know, you know, this is what we'd like you to do, but you're the content creator. You figure it out. I have products that are like $7 products that I, I requested just to fill in my schedule when I didn't have uh, any higher end to, to, to do videos on. And these companies are like, we need your, your, your name, social security number, telephone number, firstborn child. Um, and we want an update daily and we need the video done within three days of you receiving the package. And I'm like, no, well, that's just not acceptable. I said, okay, so is a $7 fucking pro uh, $7 product. And I'm just, I, it doesn't make any sense to me, but maybe, maybe the higher priced products, the companies are confident in their products. Maybe the products sell themselves. I don't know. I don't know why, but there is a very, very consistent pattern that, uh, that came to mind yesterday. So enough of that enough of that um anyway it's quarter after it's friday it's um it's friday the 13th it's uh, it's gonna be a long weekend food forest farm says they have margin to spend i was also wondering that i was also wondering that um Corey and I are hanging out this weekend, doing a lot of computer work, doing a lot of uh, inside stuff. Since it's supposed to rain consistently all through the weekend, it didn't make sense to go out and sit in the cabin since I have so much stuff to do. Uh, might come back, hopefully getting uh, all my shit together for the, the, the I don't want to call it a rebrand, but we're going to go to pretty much, um, pretty much stock uh, thumbnail description, things like that. And um, with the morning show streamlining, uh, workflows, things like that. So hopefully I have a, a, an opportunity to roll that out this weekend. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but we got a whole, whole plethora of new things coming your way. So 
anyway, check out um, check out the Telegram group at t.me slash lots chat, t.me slash lots chat. The website, thelotsproject.com, the lots L-O-T-S project.com or comfreeroots.com for all your comfrey root needs. Check out Food Forest Farms. Grab some coffee today. Check out C4 Club. Give a uh, discount code LOTS10 for 10% off and always free shipping over there at Food Forest Farms. Guys, have a fantastic weekend. Get a ton, a ton of stuff done. Swing by the Telegram chat and hang out for a little while if you got any free time this weekend. Other than that, make it count. Do something productive, figure out how to make your life better. Have an awesome weekend, and we will catch up with you on Monday. I can see the light.